Hi everyone, I just wanted to um, do a short video and um, talk to you a little bit about what's going on. It's been about a month um, since I quit my job and I am doing the soap business full time. Um, and it's a soap and bath and body uh, product business. Anyway, um, it is a commitment for sure. And I've had to do some to-do lists. Um, I've done some uh, events here at my actual ha home um, to increase sales and things like that. Um, I have increased my sales online. However, um, social media, you just have to post, post, post. And it seems like that is taking the most time um, because you have to learn um, how to post and then what posts do the best and it seems that you know doing it in-house it you know it's just difficult um because you know you've got to know TikTok, instagram facebook and then to be posting it on all three it's been um, a journey definitely um, it's been fun as well uh, i've been able to talk to my customers and i have more time to do that which is really nice all in all um you know starting your own business it's just commitment and um i'm learning that there's so much to do all the time that you just kind of have to write it down um and prioritize and so every day uh, i try to do a little bit um towards my soap business and i will make a list because sometimes when it's in your head it seems like a huge ordeal um, and it seems like this long laundry list of things to do. And yet when you write it down, it's 10 or 15 things. And, you know, if you did three a day, you can finish them in a week. So um, that's always helped. And I hope um, that might help somebody um, uh, as well that, that wants to start their own business. Every day I work on either making products, labeling products, um, I work on formulating, um, at times I work on the website and I try to spend like the day doing one of those things. Um, if I'm formulating, I try to do my formulation. I do my research first, of course, then I have a spreadsheet that I build, um, for my formulations and, um, you know, there's a lot of resources on the internet. And so I compare some of the uh, people that post on the internet, um, I can, like, let's say I'm working on a lotion. I might compare my lotion formulation to other people's uh, lotion formulations. You know, I might go to Sarah V website and read that lotion uh, ingredients list and do a, com a comparison to that one as well. Um, and basically, there's really no way to tell what percentage of ingredients are in each um, formulation. Um, based on just the ingredients list, it doesn't tell you the percentage, but how they list it on the ingredients, like the very first ingredient it ha has the most percentage of that ingredient in that formulation. So I do some comparisons on that as well um, when I do my formulations. And it's just really to see, I want to be different and I want to um, have ingredients that are better for you. And so I look at those um, companies that have been out there for years and, and are doing well. And one of my favorite is CeraVe. I hear a lot of great things about CeraVe and I don't want to copy them, but I get a little inspiration from them. Like if they use a, a peptide of some kind, I might change to another different type of peptide. So it's not exactly the same. Um, it might be a little bit different peptide, but so it's just a variation or a different peptide. Anyway, um, it's fun to do that, uh, but back to um, the daily. Uh, so to to make sure that I am staying focused on that one thing. So if it's my website that I'm working on, I'm working on that web on the website, and I might do a little research before that, make some notes, and then go to my website and go to each section and make some corrections, modifications. I reread things because I'm the only one doing it. I'm not the best speller. You know, I'm not trained in websites, so I might go to a few different websites that I like um, or that I've uh, that I've seen that are um, easy to navigate, and I make some notes, and then I go to mine and say, "Is this easy to navigate? Can I again 
get some inspiration from other sites so that I can make mine this uh, comparable or better. It's difficult. It's not easy. I, um, there are days when I'm just not motivated, but I try to do something every day um, for my business. So whether it's research or learning, and I try to also give myself some grace um, and give myself a break because um, having a, a business, you tend to work on that all day, every day, all night, every night. And you've got to spend some time with your family and just try and give a good balance. But a lot of grace and um, uh, is what I'm giving myself because it's difficult to have a business um, because you want it to be successful. Am I successful? Um, well, the people that have bought my products, they I, I don't hear any bad um, comments. Uh, I'm sure that that... Um, you know, on some of my products, they could be better, but I don't get any bad feedback. And I wish I did, um, because I, I would like to hear what people, you know, in comparison, um, to some of the other things they've tried with mine, um, what they like more or less. And so I, I, I do ask questions and I, I really ask them, please tell me the truth. Tell me if you like it, if you like, had something better, um, because I, I need to make some changes on mine. I'm, I'm, I'm learning and developing and, you know, I don't have a, a group of a hundred women that I can pull. Um, I do have groups of women that I pull. Like I had an event at my house, um, this weekend and I asked a lot of questions. I had them fill out a questionnaire and I did a, a giveaway for that. Um, so that, that, that was kind of fun. Um, cause I learned some information about them, some of their favorite products. And then I just basically did a giveaway, um, um, thanking them for filling that out. Uh, and that was kind of fun and interesting to see what some of their favorite products were and some of their favorite scents were. Somebody wants to start a business, um, you know, you, you have to start, um, it, you just have to do it. Start with one thing and go from there. I did a couple of like classes, the freebie, uh, YouTube classes. And, you know, I, it was difficult. Um, there was one that I had done that they wanted me to develop a product line and I just didn't know how to do that. So I just started with one thing and then I did another and then another and then another. And was it a product line? I, I couldn't even think of a name for a product line. It was really difficult, but I just started. And even now I have a difficult time building a product line and I just started a facial collection um, and a product collection um, with my face care um, line, I guess. So it was an evolution, um, but it was a class I had taken like four years ago uh, and I'm barely doing it now. And, and that's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm giving, again, I'm giving myself some grace and I'm just learning the process and I'm doing it day by day. That's all you can do. Um, you know, with packaging, I, my first packaging was, ugh, I didn't, I didn't like it. And it just evolved over time. And now I'm like, oh, okay. And when I asked people about my packaging, they're like, I, li I really like your packaging. Um, I, it's shocking that you do it all in house. And I do, I do do it all in house. I started with Avery labels and now I went to online labels. I will say that Avery labels, they're really good labels. I, I do like them. Um, it, uh, online labels are, are good as well, but Avery labels seem thicker and I liked the thickness of those labels. Um, but online labels, I have much more of a selection and then they give a free, um, software that allows you to design your label on their software. So does Avery. Um, but the Maestro uh, online label uh, software is much easier to use, especially when you have different scents and flavors and things like that. It's much, much easier to use than the Avery was. So I'm transitioning from Avery to online labels just because it's just easier to use and I get more choices um, and it's not as expensive. That's another thing. Um, and I get my labels a lot quicker with online labels than I do with, um, Maestro. So that's a tip. 
I'm really new to YouTube. I'm really new to my business. I'm just learning honestly and trying to get um, videos out there to learn YouTube um, because this is just another just venture in my journey of my business. I, you know, I wanted to document some of the things that I'm doing every day and I wanted to um, just document my journey and help whoever I can learn because I think people hesitate um, to start a business. I think people doubt themselves and, you know, we can live all our life with doubt and never do anything we really wanted to do. And I lived with doubt for so long and I wanted to, to have a business my whole life. I have four kids and I wanted to be home with them and I wanted to be able to make my own schedule and work when I could work and all of that. Um, and I was never able to do it. And you know, it was just my journey, but um, I couldn't, I was a single mom for a really long time. Um, I've been married now for a really long time, but anyway, you know, I'm doing it now. And so again, Grace, you know, that's all you can do is, is try. Put a little time into something that you love. You know, I suggest that you, you do that. And, you know, I started off making soap as a hobby, mainly because I was allergic to soap. And then my mom was um, diagnosed with cancer and, um, we, I just felt like they couldn't give us any answers to why she had the cancer that she had. And so, you know, I started making soap. We put so much on our body every day from lotions to creams to foot stuff to makeup to sunscreen to perfume um, and all, you know, all kinds of stuff. So I just wanted to know exactly what was in my product. You know, when you buy stuff um, at the store, you don't always know. And I wanted to make sure I did something. I wanted to do less chemicals. Everything's a chemical, whether it's natural or not. But everything's a chemical, but I wanted less ingredients and I wanted, uh, ingredients that were better for us. I noticed, um, working in the daycare at my church that a lot of the kids had eczema and I was like, what is happening? It was like 80% of the kids had eczema and they were bleeding or itchy. And I'm like, what is going on? Why is this? I think a lot of it has to do with the food that we ingest, but also the products that we put on our skin and, and pollution and all kinds of, there's all kinds of factors. So I chose one and that one was skincare. And so I wanted to, you know, uh, make things that were uh, kind of simple and good for you um, products. And so that's what I'm doing. In fact, my granddaughter, um, my newest granddaughter, uh, she had eczema really bad. She was bleeding. Um, my daughter had called me and told me about it. And so I formulated a two ingredient product for her and it has helped her. And so that is my skin therapy. And, um, you know, it lasts a long time. A lot of people that have eczema like it because it's just two ingredients and they know exactly if it works or not for them. And for all of them that have bought it so far, love it and have bought it already again. So I'm, I'm keeping that, that product definitely. And that view is I might have a product and then I watch to see if people like it or they don't like it. And then I will phase it out if they don't like it. And so I've been, I've had a few different products now and I've been in business long enough um, to where I've, I can phase out a few things. Um, and some people do get upset because some people like those products, but when it's a small amount of people, I might phase it out. And hey, I can always bring it back as a temporary, that um, a special edition. I could always bring it back again if, um, I get enough requests or um, if I feel like I have a big enough um, clientele that would want want it, that product. So um, I tried that skin therapy and um, everybody is loving it right now. So I'm actually making more of it, not just for my granddaughter, but for everybody that has eczema and it's really worked out for me. So that's a lot of fun, definitely, when you find something that works for a lot of people or cancer patients. That's another um, cancer patients, they tend to get really sensitive, like, especially if they're on hospice, um, they just get, um, or if they're taking chemo, they get very um, sensitive to scents and smells. Um, they get really dry, you know, they're going through a lot in their body. And so that was another product that they could use that is, um, good for the skin 
and I made one scented and unscented, scented naturally. Um, and it smells like an almond joy. It smells amazing. But um, the one with scent is naturally scented. That's the way it comes, the, the oils come. Um, but then I bought some that don't have the scent because not everybody wants to smell like an almond joy. But um, so for cancer patients, they're able to use that or people on hospice, like I said, that are sensitive to smell, they can use that and it's, again, two ingredients. So that's been a hit for me. Um, please check out my website, uh, remedybathhouse.com. Um, let me know your thoughts and I hope to see you again. Thanks so much for joining me. Uh, this is Bridget Michelle. See you later.